many times when we enter an Orthodox church, our eyes are immediately taken to the iconography, especially if we haven't been back to church in quite some time. We notice things perhaps that we didn't notice before because we are looking at everything with a different perspective. Each one of us present and those watching online have been into this church for many, many times. And yet, situated on both sides, depicted in icons, are four stylite saints. The saints I am referring to are the ones that are situated on top of the columns. We may have noticed their icons, seen them, tried to figure out why it is that they're situated and seated upon a column. But just a few days ago, on December 11th, we celebrated the feast day of one of these four, of Daniel the Stylite, who is depicted here, uh, the second, closest to you, not closest to the altar. Now you will notice that Daniel is situated on a column, and we will get to how it is that he found himself upon this column. So Daniel, at the age of 12, came and entered a monastery. Now you can look and say, how is it that such a young person offered himself to become a monk at that tender age? Well, those of us who have 12-year-olds, or perhaps those of us who can remember when we were 12 years old, know how convincing we can be when our heart is set on something. And Daniel's heart, from the time that he was truly a young boy, was always set on God. And so at the tender age of 12, he found himself face to face with the igumenon, with the monk who was in charge of the monastery, asking him to allow him to come. Now, as any discussion with the 12-year-old goes, when they may have been told no at first occurrence, you can imagine that this wasn't just simply, you're too young, come back in a few years. This was a discussion that took place for quite some time. And the woman are seeing, through God's grace, the true desire of young Daniel's heart allowed him to stay in the monastery. And he stayed there, really, for quite a number of years. As time went on, he accompanied the igumenon, the abbot, together with other uh, priest monks, archimandrites, and they went on a pilgrimage to visit Saint Simeon, the stylite, who is depicted here in the uh, icon on the column that is closest to the altar. He was the first and most uh, famous, if you will, of these stylite saints, of men who situated themselves on top of a large column for years, for decades, and dedicated themselves to a life of prayer. So Daniel sets off together with the abbot, together with other uh, archimandrites, priest monks, to be able to go and visit Simeon. Now where we find holy people, we also find Satan, who struggles to distract the sainted person from his life or her life of prayer. And so as they approached St. Simeon and they saw many people around who would come to pray at the foot of the column, to join him in prayer. And as they approached, they could feel not simply God's presence in the person of the saint situated high in a column, but certainly they could feel the 
uh, weight of the battle that was being waged by this holy man through God's grace and through prayer. It is said that the priest monks who were traveling with Simeon recoiled in some type of fear. And only Daniel found the courage to be able to grow, go and grab a ladder, place it that was situated nearby, place it on the column, climb up the column to receive a blessing from St. Simeon. Now, through God's grace, many holy men and women have been given the ability uh, through spiritual ascesis, through spiritual exercise and prayer and fasting, to be able to see uh, into the future of what is, uh, lies ahead for individuals. It's why quite often that people uh, are afraid to be in the presence of a saint because they will tell them what it is that they don't want to know which is how it is and what they must do to redirect their own lives so that they may be found worthy to enter into paradise. And so Daniel climbs up the ladder to receive a blessing from Simeon. Simeon seeing and knowing this young monk, even though it is the first time that they meet in person, says, take courage, Daniel, be patient and strong, for you will have to endure many hardships for God, but trust in him, and he will give you strength. Now, after a few years, the abbot of the monastery in which Daniel was at passed away, and Daniel was elected to succeed him as a woman, or as the abbot. When he was about 51 years of age, he saw a vision of Saint Simeon surrounded, and he saw this vision of Saint Simeon. And in the place of Saint Simeon on top of the stylite, on top of the column, suddenly he saw himself surrounded by two angels. Just a few Days later, one of the disciples of St. Simeon came to the monastery to visit. And together they confirmed and spoke about this vision which he saw. So St. Daniel left the monastery in which he was at, traveled towards Constantinople just outside of the city limits, and through the assistance of other people who were there erected for himself a column upon which he climbed and began to pray. Now, the land upon which this column was built did not belong to him. It belonged to another individual who was not so happy that this holy man built a column on his property. And now people began to flock to his area and stay and pray and ask St. Daniel for his prayers and intercessions. And so one day he took it upon himself to go and to chase them all away and to throw Daniel off. And as he began to leave his house, suddenly a storm came, whipping very high winds that killed all of his crops. The landowner received the message from God loud and clear. And just several days later went and built for Daniel a second column, even larger than the first, upon which the saint now found himself in a life of prayer. It's not easy praying anywhere and dedicating oneself to a life of fasting. Sep let alone being separated from the world in one place. Not just for an hour, not just for a day, 
not just for a year, but for decades in prayer. Being assaulted still by Satan, seeking to tempt you and to lead you astray. No safety from the elements. Distractions aplenty, not simply from temptations that one cannot see, but from weather, air, sun, cold, all types of things. In fact, one storm was so great that it was reported that those who were nearby could see the column swaying. And temperatures had fallen so great that the next day when they climbed the ladder to check on him, they found him nearly frozen and were taking buckets of warm water and pouring upon him to thaw out his uh, body. Daniel stayed on that uh, pillar for 33 years. He did come down once when a controversy had arisen regarding a heresy. And he came down from the column and walked to nearby Constantinople and preached the truth of orthodoxy, the true teaching, and left and went back to his column, clarifying the church's position, and on the way, healing those who came to him, asking uh, to receive blessing through God's grace. Now, what is it for us to learn from a saint situated on a column? And how does this provide such a beautiful example of patience uh, even now? Well, all of us in one way or another in the last nine months have found ourselves separated from the world that we once knew, from a reality that was not true reality in which we lived. We find ourselves uh, within our home, surrounded perhaps by immediate family, sometimes by ourselves. Uh, tempted, tempted certainly, uh, by temptations seen and unseen, with feelings of anger, distress, panic, Loneliness, jealousy, longing for things that we used to know and perhaps that we don't have. Daniel stands uh, high above us on his column, reminding us to look not within ourselves, but to look heavenward towards God, to change the perspective in which we have and not look at it from what was taken from us, but rather to see it that through this uh, difficulty, through these challenges that the world as a whole is enduring, how is it that we can use this towards a blessing? that opens our heart to be able to receive blessings from God. To look and see not what was taken away from us, but to give thanks for the new perspective that we have gained regarding how much it is and how it is that we are truly blessed. God has provided for us courage, strength, and endurance even in the midst of turmoil. That he has shown forth his face to give us courage even when we cannot fully see our own. In the Apolitikion of this great saint, 
we hear the following words. You became a pillar of patience and did emulate the forefathers righteous, O righteous one. Job in his sufferings, Joseph in temptations. So Daniel stands before us as an example of patience, of endurance, of love. Of the wonderful blessings that we have and are able to uh, experience in this world, even amidst turmoil, pain, and suffering. We are reminded through the prayers of the sufferings of Job. We are reminded also of the temptations of the noble Joseph. And we, through it all, cry out to God to be able to give us the strength to not hear those voices that seek to lead us astray, but to hear the true voice of our Lord, who calls us, who invites us to enjoy his heavenly banquet, the gospel lesson that we heard today, and to remember remember that many are called, but few are chosen. And so may we hear God's invitation, and may we recognize that he has chosen us to worship him, to give thanks to him, and to glorify him until the endless ages. Amen.